Lebanon, once nicknamed the Switzerland of the Middle East for its strong banking sector and spectacular views from its mountainous valleys. For centuries, Lebanon remained a haven to a large Christian population, which has left an indelible mark on the country and the region. The Lebanese Republic, population 4.3 million, is located on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea between Israel and Syria. The diverse landscape encompasses 225 kilometers of coastline, breathtaking valleys, as well as snow-peaked mountainous regions which hold a vast water surplus in the otherwise arid region of the Middle East. The Lebanese economy is primarily fueled by its services and banking sectors, which make up 70% of the gross domestic product. The tourism industry offers a wide variety of attractions, from sunny beaches to magnificent landscapes and historical sites to the only ski resorts in the Arab world. In recent years, the neighboring Syrian conflict, as well as internal upheaval and the world economic slump, have negatively affected Lebanon, which has worked hard to rebuild after years of war and turmoil. More than a quarter of the population still live below the poverty line. Lebanon's heritage reaches back to the earliest evidence of mankind. Various cultures like the Phoenician, Greek and the Roman have dominated the region throughout millennia. Part of the Ottoman Empire from the early 16th century, Lebanon became a French mandate after World War I, achieving independence in 1943. The first 20 years after independence were crowned with great economic prosperity. Unfortunately, Lebanon's fate began to shift violently in 1967 after the influx of almost half a million Palestinians following the Arab-Israeli war. Tensions were then escalated as the delicate balance of political power began to shift as a result of the Muslim refugees as well as the increased armed campaigns by Palestinians against Israel. In 1975, a civil war erupted between a coalition of Christian groups and the joint forces of the Palestine Liberation Organization, allied with left-wing Druze and Muslim militias. The civil war lasted until 1990, claiming 120,000 lives, with as many wounded. Some 900,000 people, representing one-fifth of the pre-war population, were displaced or had emigrated. Syrian forces occupied Lebanon until 2005, causing further rifts and instability, including the assassination of former Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri. In July 2006, Israel and Hezbollah, a powerful Shia Islamic militant group and political party, once again engaged in deadly battle for 34 days across Lebanon and northern Israel. Currently, the Syrian civil war is spilling over Lebanon's borders. Clashes between supporters and opponents of Syria's regime threatened to pull the country into the neighboring civil war. In addition, the constant influx of refugees has the alarming potential to destabilize the fragile country yet again. According to Lebanese officials, there are close to 1.5 million Syrian refugees in the country. Lebanon has a distinct political system. Its confessional democracy distributes political and institutional power proportionally among religious communities based on census data. The presidency is reserved for a Maronite Christian, the prime minister is a Sunni Muslim and the speaker of parliament a Shia Muslim. However, no new census has been conducted since 1932 and Muslim groups, as their number grow, have demanded a change in representation, reflecting their increased proportion in the population. This communal tension has been at the heart of most internal conflicts in Lebanon. 
Christians represent about 41% of the overall population, while the Sunnis 27% and the Shiites 27%. Added to these are the Druze, which make up around 5% of the population. Lebanon remains a leader in the Middle East with regard to respect for religious freedom. Faith groups are able to organize their own schools, associations and courts. The country has a tradition of coexistence and tolerance, evident in places like the Shrine of Our Lady of Lebanon outside Beirut. There one can see many women wearing the distinctive Islamic headscarf, accompanying their families to pay homage to the Virgin Mary. Christianity in Lebanon reaches back to the visits of Jesus to the southern territories where he is said to have performed many miraculous healings. Biblical scriptures talk of Peter and Paul evangelizing among the Phoenicians. In the 4th century AD, Christianity would take permanent root through the asceticism of Saint Maron. His orthodox community of monks preached the gospel throughout the Lebanese and Syrian countrysides gradually growing in strength and number. By the 8th century, the monks had moved with their band of followers into the remote mountains of Lebanon, where they existed in relative isolation for centuries until the time of the Crusades. In the 12th century, the Maronite church cemented their communion with the Holy See. One of the most venerated saints from the Middle East is Saint Charbel, a Lebanese Maronite monk and hermit. Today, many miracles are attributed to his intercession and he's known throughout the world for his devotion to prayer. Currently, the Syrian Maronite church makes up 21% of Lebanon's Christian population, followed by communities of the Greek Orthodox, Armenian and Greek Catholics as well as eight other Christian confessions. For centuries, Lebanon's Christians have been brick builders of civil society, bridging the divide between various religions in the region. Today, the Lebanese people are grappling with the massive Syrian refugee crisis. The Universal Church is helping its brothers and sisters, however it can, in this difficult time although this task is often more than it can handle. There is now thought to be one Syrian refugee in the country to roughly every six Lebanese citizens. In these uncertain times, more and more Christians are thinking about emigrating because of the worsening economic situation, as well as the sectarian tensions between Shiites and Sunnis. Today, the survival and continuity of Lebanon's Christians needs strengthening. In this ever more globalized world, our Christianity must remain the leaven in this Middle Eastern bread. It must remain, as the Gospel says, like the salt of the land here in the Middle East. It gives life meaning. It accompanies history. Without it, the roots of Christendom will be undermined.